Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Shafi Indul Fikar and I am teaching you cell physiology. Uh, our today's topic is transport mechanisms. Let's start the topic. Transport of substances across the cell membrane is necessary to maintain the normal functioning of cells in our body. It is obvious that substances need to be traveled in or out of the cell to maintain homeostasis. That is a constant uh, condition in our body <clears throat> for the normal functioning of the cell. Transport, there are different types of transport. So number one is the active transport. Number two is the passive transport. And number three is the vesicular transport. Active transport is further divided into primary active transport and secondary active transport. Passive transport is further divided into diffusion and osmosis. Then diffusion is further divided into simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Last is the vesicular transport. Vesicular transport is divided into endocytosis, exocytosis, and transcytosis. We will discuss all of these types of all these types of transport one by one. So let's start with the active transport. Okay. Active transport, it is a type of transport in which the molecules move against the concentration gradient. That is from a low concentration to a high concentration. Okay. And energy must be provided for their transport. Active transport is molecules which move against the concentration gradient. That is from a low concentration to a high concentration. And energy must be provided in this type of transport. Now, active transport is further divided into two types of transport. Okay, on the basis of energy used uh, by these this transport. So active transport is divided into primary active transport and secondary active transport. So what is primary active transport? Primary active transport is again, it is a transport of substances against a concentration gradient with the use of energy directly from the hydrolysis of ATP. This type of transport uses energy from the hydrolysis of ATP. When ATP is broken down, energy is released and this energy is used by the these transport, this type of transport and then the substances move accordingly in or out of the cell. So the uh, example of primary active transport is sodium potassium pump, then calcium pump and third is the hydrogen potassium pump. So what is sodium potassium pump? This is a very famous pump. Okay. And it is very important also. Let us see the structure of this pump. It has the falling structure. So this is the cell membrane, which is the lipid bilayer. This is the pump. Here is one receptor site. Okay. This is purple. This is the second receptor site, which is in green. So it has three receptor sites or binding sites okay, for sodium, three sodium ion. It has a binding site for three sodium ion or three receptor sites for sodium ion and two receptor sites for potassium ion. Okay, this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside of the cell. So sodium site, uh, receptor sites are present inside the cell and it is three in number. So three sodium ion can bind at one time, whereas two potassium binding sites are present outside the cell. So two potassium ion can bind at a time. Then it also has a ATPase. ATPase, okay, ATPase uh, function is to break down ATP into ADP and phosphate ion. So when this process occurs, it is a hydrolysis of the ATP, then energy is released. Then this energy is used by the sodium potassium pump and it transports three sodium and two potassium, but in opposite side direction. So when energy is liberated, three sodium ions travel from inside to outside of the cell. Remember this, three sodium ions tra are transferred from inside to outside and in return two potassium ions are pumped or transferred from outside to inside. I repeat again this is sodium potassium pump. It has three binding sites for or receptor sites for sodium ion which are present intracellularly and two binding sites for potassium ion which are present extracellularly. It also has ATPase activity which breaks down ATP into ATP and phosphate ion and energy is released. So it pumps sodium potassium pumps three sodium ion outside the cell and two potassium ion inside the cell. Now what is the function of the sodium potassium pump? This is very important. It has three functions. Number one, it controls the volume of each cell. What does that mean? It means it helps to regulate cell volume by controlling the concentrations of solutes inside the cell and thus minimizing osmotic effect that would induce swelling or shrinkage of the cell. If the pump stops, the increased sodium concentration within the cell will promote the osmotic inflow water. You have to remember where there is sodium, there will be water. So this pump 
what does it do it pumps three sodium ion from inside to outside so when sodium moves from inside to outside water also goes with it but within normal levels so in this way it controls the volume of each cell it depends how much sodium is pumped outside okay because water always travel in the direction of sodium in this way it controls the volume of the cell number 2 electrogenic nature of the pump it establishes sodium and potassium concentration gradient across the membrane of all cell what is what does that mean we know that every ion contains a charge on it like sodium has a positive charge potassium has a positive charge chloride has negative charge and so on so when this pump uh, works it also creates a gradient across the ye uh, membrane cell membrane this gradient is then used uh, for by the nerves and the muscle cells to generate chemical signals and then they will establish action potential which will you which you will study in nerve and muscle for the normal function so electrogenic nature of the pump because it pumps ion and ion contains charges it establishes gradient across the plasma membrane which is important for the generation of action potential or electric signal number 3 is energy used for secondary active transport the steep sodium gradient is used because sodium is pumped more than potassium so sodium is important the steep sodium gradient is used used to provide energy for secondary active transport when sodium is transported outside so the gradient which establish it provides energy for the secondary active transport that energy is used by the secondary active transport to transport the ion uh, inside or outside the cell so this is very important sodium potassium pump structure of sodium potassium pump function um, how does it works okay and then the function of sodium potassium pump here are some obviously there are different channels in our body sodium channel potassium channel we will discuss this later first we go on to calcium pump we have studied sodium we are doing uh, primary active transport we have studied sodium potassium pump example of primary active transport now we are doing calcium pump calcium ions are normally maintained at extremely low concentrations in the intracellular cytosol of virtually all cells in the body at a concentration about 10000 times less than that in the ecf we have already studied that in the icf uh, no calcium is present in the first lecture if you remember i showed you a table in which there were various concentrations of uh, ions so in uh, calcium is present is not present at all in the intracellular fluid it is always present in the ecf so uh, there are three sites where the calcium pump is present three sites in the body where the calcium pump is present number one two sites there are two sites in the body where so, so calcium pump is present and it is an example of the primary active transport one is the cell membrane okay when where there is sodium potassium pump there is also a calcium pump on the cell membrane okay and it pumps calcium to the outside of so one pump is present on the cell membrane which pumps calcium from inside to outside the second pump is present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum what is sarcoplasmic reticulum it is same as that of endoplasmic reticulum but it is present in the muscle cells. so muscle cells don't have endoplasmic reticulum they have sarcoplasmic reticulum and one calcium pump is present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells and the mitochondria in all the cells what is calcium pump calcium pump is an example of primary active transport there are two sites where calcium pump is present one in the one on the cell membrane and one in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cells and the mitochondria this pump continuously pumps calcium from inside to outside last is the hydrogen pump which is example of primary active like sodium uh, like calcium pump hydrogen pump is also located in two areas of our body one is the gastric glands and other is the renal tubules gastric glands your stomach glands and uh, second is the renal tubule in the kidney gastric glands specifically in the parietal cells hydrochloric acid secretion during hydrochloric acid secretion gastric gland secrete hcl that is hydrochloric acid through parietal cells so when hcl is secreted this pump hydrogen pump hydrogen ion into the gastric lumen in exchange for potassium it is hydrogen potassium pump and it what does it do it pumps hydrogen ion into into the gastric lumen in exchange for potassium second is the renal tubule renal tubule intercalated cells in the late distal tubule in the cortical collecting ducts these are the area of the renal nephron okay the distal tubule in the cortical collecting ducts in these 
areas intercalated cells are present where hydrogen potassium pump is present its secretion it causes secretion of hydrogen ion and reabsorption of potassium ion. again it secretes hydrogen ion and it reabsorbs potassium ion. so hydrogen pump is present in two areas of our body one is in the stomach and one in the tubule and it pumps hydrogen ion in exchange of potassium ion. okay so this was primary active transport primary active transport other was the secondary active transport secondary active transport energy utilized in the transport of one substance helps in the movement of other substance it does not use atp instead when uh, one substance is transport it helps the movement of the other substance energy so where does the energy come from energy is derived secondary from energy that has been stored in the form of ionic concentration differences of secondary molecules or ionic substances between the two sides of the membrane which is primarily created by the primary active transport so secondary active transport does not use atp rather it uses the concentration difference between ions that is the constant difference inside and outside the cell concentration difference okay and when the primary active transport is going on then the energy which is released they are used by the secondary active transport so and cause the movement of other substance as well now secondary active transport is also divided into core transport and counter transport co as its names indicate it means in the same direction in close association counter always mean opposite secondary active transport is divided into co transport and counter transport what are this co transport when the movement of one ion causes the movement of another ion in the same direction it is very easy when one ion is moving for example when one ion is moving inside the cell and it also causes the movement of another ion inside the cell then it is called co transport example of co transport sodium pump sodium when sodium is transported uh, it causes the transport of glucose amino acid with, with it see this diagram it is the sodium septet so this is a sodium binding site and this is glucose binding site when sodium binds with its receptor at the same time glucose also binds with the receptor but first when the sodium moves inside the cell it drags along with it glucose and glucose is also moved moves inside the cell so when the transport of one ion causes the transport of another ion in the same direction it is called co transport example is co transport of glucose amino acid with sodium okay it is very simple and counter transport when the movement of one ion causes the movement of another ion but in opposite direction then it is called counter transport for example sodium calcium counter transport and sodium hydrogen counter transport again this is a receptor site for sodium so uh, sodium when sodium binds with its receptor it causes the movement of sodium from outside to inside at the same time calcium binds to the receptor and it is moved out from inside to outside in the same way this is sodium hydrogen counter transport the ions move in opposite direction they bind at the same time but they move in opposite direction so you have to remember the examples also last is the difference between co transport and counter transport so co transport we also called it symport that is in uh, similar and counter transport is also called anti port that is opposite co transport sodium moves downhill and counter transport sodium also sodium moves downhill in co transport molecules to be co transported moves in the same direction in counter molecules to be uh, counter transported moves in opposite direction and then there are the examples you can read it from here okay so this was all about the active transport i repeat again what is active transport is a it is a transport of substances against the concentration concentration gradient with the use of energy then it is divided into two types of uh, primary active transport and secondary active transport primary active transport transport of substances cross the concentration gradient with the use of energy directly in the form the form of atp and counter <clears throat> secondary active transport molecule move from one transport of one substance helps in the movement of the other substance it is not without the use of atp rather they use the energy which is stored in the form of concentration differences across the cell membrane that is from inside and outside what is the difference of ion inside and outside then secondary active transport is further divided into secondary co transport and secondary counter transport co transport movement of one molecule causes the movement of other molecule in the same direction counter transport movement of one molecule causes the movement of other molecule in opposite direction so this was all about the active active transport